Hi, this is Sapin Bhartia and we are here at KubeCon and Cloud Recon in London. And we have with us once again, Matt Butcher, CEO and co-founder of Fermion and John Alexander, SVP of product at Akamai. Matt, John, it's great to have you both on the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. First of all, I want to hear from both of you. You can take turns. Talk about this event. I, I think I've been to almost every KubeCon at this point. I, I missed one or two here and there. Uh, I think London has just been a fantastic event for us. Uh, the level of energy here has been very high. Uh, you know, AI is still emerged as a major story and we're having lots of good conversations about that. Uh, sovereignty and issues uh, related to where your data is stored, where your processing is done has emerged as a sort of surprise theme to me and it had some fantastic conversations around that. I'm, I'm gonna call this one of my favorite KubeCons. Is there any bias? Oh, yeah, there's always bias. <laughs> Every KubeCon's a favorite. It's like you have no favorite children, right? Uh, but I mean, I think this the announcement that Akamai and Fermion have done together here is something that has, you know, sparked a lot of interest, sparked some fantastic discussions. I'm, of course, really excited about it. I know John's excited about yeah, it. Yeah, so, so my first uh, KubeCon, so definitely my favorite KubeCon there <laughs> so far. But uh, no, it's a, it's a really interesting show for me, like very uh, kind of developer-centric, very different conversations. And we have at other conferences uh, that we go to, so for me, that's been very, very uh, kind of uh, interesting to have uh, more of the technology-oriented uh, discussions. Excellent. And uh, WebAssembly has the kind of attention, attraction, adoption. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Talk a bit about you, Matt. Why is, you know, what is driving this, you know, interest? Yeah. WebAssembly, you know, started as a web browser technology. Uh, and and was very successful actually as a web browser technology. I know Figma's used it, Adobe's used it, a number of people have used it, but it was so well constructed as a technology that it began to find usages outside of the browser. And it began to find quite a bit of support outside the browser. Of course, uh, at, at Fermion, we're excited about it as a serverless runtime. I, it's been used in a number of embedded media applications. I know that uh, BBC uses it, for example, in their media player. It's finding usages in IoT all over the place. And then, you know, the big gamble of WebAssembly was, you know, it's a specification, but the only way that the specification is going to be used is if it's implemented by a wide variety of languages in the language ecosystem. We saw very early adopters, you know, C, Rust, then Go and Python and, and Ruby. But uh, only a week ago, Oracle announced that they are now supporting WebAssembly. Now, Java was kind of the last major language to move over to WebAssembly. And I, it feels like one of those moments when you look and say, yeah, this thing is is not not happening. This thing has now happened, right? WebAssembly is clearly a, a, a powerful technology that enjoys industry support from you know the the newest and most emerging technologies to the stalwarts. And John, from your perspective, I will also uh, like in the light of this announcement, you know, yeah. talk a bit about you know edge native. We talk about cloud native, then we talk about of course AI native. We have started talking about edge. what is edge native. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. So Akamai has always been an edge company. So for twenty five years, we've run this very large distributed uh, platform uh, that started off supporting content delivery, and then we moved application security and infrastructure security onto that same infrastructure. Uh, about five years ago, we started to get into cloud computing, um, and so. We've always had a lot of inbound uh, requests from customers to run more complex applications on top of Akamai. They really liked the performance we could give, they really liked the security and protections, but they wanted to do more. Uh, they, so the when we talk about edge native, it's the applications that benefit from running at the edge, being distributed, having low latency, running in specified territories. Um, and so it leverages a lot of cloud native, it built on top of those uh, cloud native technologies, but it, um, is also very uh, geography centric, uh, very distributed, um, and the uh, the performance sensitivity like that uh, that's what we mean by edge native. And Matt, what does serverless or WebAssembly mean in this edge native world? Our focus as Fermion for now three and a half years, right, has been to build an, a fantastic serverless environment. And when I talk about serverless, I mean really more like that programming pattern where instead of writing a software server that runs for, you know, days, weeks, months, uh, you're writing a small snippet of code that takes a request comes in, it executes to completion, it returns a response and it shuts down. So its lifespan is milliseconds or seconds or maybe minutes on the long side. Uh, 
that particular paradigm gained a lot of traction with AWS Lambda, with Azure Functions, and was used for a lot of utility computing. But the performance there was never high enough that you could run front, uh, you know, front line workloads, the kinds of things that Akamai really specializes in, right? Delivering media in the blink of an eye, uh, loading websites in under 100 milliseconds. If you have to wait 200 to 500 milliseconds as you do with Lambda before the user land code is even executing, you can't meet the sort of Akamai class of use case, the kinds of things that large media companies care about, the kinds of things that sports and gaming companies care about. Uh, and so you know, as Fermion set out to sort of reinvent serverless, we wanted to build the kind of runtime platform that was both highly, highly performant, but also as feature rich as AWS Lambda or Azure Functions or Google Cloud Run. Uh, and I think that the cool thing about what Akamai and Fermion have done together is, you know, Fermion has built a very fast compute engine. Akamai and we we did, we only had a couple of years to do it. Akamai has made substantial investments over decades and decades and has the fastest and largest uh, distributed network in the world. And you take the compute power and the network power and you combine those and you can just deliver mind boggling performance, even with these edge native applications that are far, far more ambitious than sort of gen one edge functions were. If you just draw a parallel to the Linux days, you know, S86 versus ARM, you, you, you're talking about there are certain use cases where serverless makes sense, but sometimes it benefits a lot of other use cases which may not have that kind of, I mean, media, but, and we all have consumers of media. So can you also talk about through this, you know, at going adoption of serverless, WebAssembly, beyond these use cases, just like the ARM impacted everybody else, what kind of impact you will see on the larger market I think, uh, I mean, we both have answers to this. I'll give a little bit, I'm gonna pass it to you because I think, yeah, this is this is one of you who asked our favorite question, right? I think that, you know, in, in the kind of first generation of edge functions, uh, you, a lot of it was about manipulating HTTP traffic in order to shape it the right way or authorize it. All of those things can still be done in this new generation. But what excites me is that uh, distributed applications, you know, content management systems, digital experience platforms, uh, those systems can now be run entirely on the edge now. You don't necessarily need the upstream in data center component anymore. And that means just faster delivery, uh, fantastic distributed computing support. Uh, I know there are other use cases you're like waiting to waiting to talk about, but I'm gonna guess one of them is AI. Yeah, I was no, going absolutely. to say the same. <laughs> so AI inference is definitely uh, kind of a, a hot topic. And so, I mean, I, I think what we see now is um, not everything needs to run on serverless, but many things can. And I think that's a big unlocker. I think that uh, is allowing people to uh, think differently around how they architect. And so a big uh, ETL job, that doesn't necessarily yep. need to run on serverless. That can stay running on top of VMs or bare metals or running in containers. So not everything needs to move to the edge. Not everything needs to run in serverless, but many things can. And so as we see use cases like AI inference, that's a perfect fit. Like that's something that we're very excited around. We're demoing here at the show, uh, so a lot of interest around that. But that's an example of like a new use case where you couldn't do this before because of the, the computation power that you needed, the access to the GPUs. The technology didn't exist. That infrastructure wasn't at the edge. And technologies like WebAssembly weren't available to power those types of applications. So we're unlocking use cases like that. I think virtual reality, there's a lot of personalization that we do for commerce customers. So. Uh, creating those more uh, engaging, rich experiences. Uh, that's the uh, the type of use case that is now kind of moving to the edge and uh, really taking advantage of this uh, type of technology. Uh, also, Akamai, you know, through Linode acquisition, and before that, you had a father up to the city and there, uh, democratized access to compute, network, storage. And now when we look at AI in Transnial, it is expensive, complicated. So how is Akamai kind of distributed at the edge and democratizing it to technology like WebAssembly. Yeah, so I mean, I think first off, I mean, the, the, the way that we think about it is the, uh, the goal is to get to a point where it's presented as inference as a service. Today, we're still very much in that renting infrastructure, uh, renting GPUs, deploying for, for peak and uh, having a lot of resources sat idle. That's a very expensive, complicated way to, uh, to build applications and that's holding back a lot of uh, usage today. We're starting to see a lot of uh, our customers moving towards wanting to run AI in production, infusing AI into their applications. And to really unlock that and support that, it needs to be presented as a service. So a serverless uh, infrastructure helps with that, it scales up and scales down. 
Um, but also having the uh, the infrastructure in the right place. And so a lot of the AI applications that we're seeing are performance sensitive, they're latency sensitive, they're interactive, and they need to run in the locations where they're close to the end user, where the data resides as well. That's where Akamai can bring the infrastructure. And so bringing these different pieces together is allowing us to uh, start to support these applications at, at scale and at the right cost point. Uh, to uh, to support the uh, the customer and from from WebAssembly from your perspective, what role do you see of WebAssembly irrespective of the use case? Is it the technology similar to the kernel, Kubernetes, OpenStack? No, Linux Foundation has all three technologies. So, what are your thoughts on the role of WebAssembly for Mion? Where do you fit in this picture, irrespective of where the workload is moving? Yeah, I I mean the. The big story for us has always been uh, long ago, for decades now, we have thought of things in terms of sort of a client server model, right? I, I've got my server running somewhere out there. I've got this web browser in front of me, and those are the two components. Uh, what we're seeing is sort of the blending of, you know, server, edge, uh, you know, CDN edge, IoT, embedded devices into this sort of continuum of computing. And that means that because WebAssembly is a, a platform neutral binary format, we can run it on all these different hardware profiles, on all these different operating systems. And then we have technologies like Kubernetes that, it, that are designed to be able to spread out applications in different environments. Uh, and, and it's very exciting to see the tools that were originally built for containers turning out to be so flexible that they can also schedule WebAssembly. And suddenly we can enable this sort of WebAssembly moving all across that continuum, WebAssembly in the browser, WebAssembly on the edge, WebAssembly in your Kubernetes cluster. And that's a really exciting story. I think that's where you see all the iterations across these last you know, 10 years of KubeCon uh, developing a platform that's that robust and flexible and the whole CNCF ecosystem of de developing tools that can be plugged into this environment really coming to fruition in something like this. And from your perspective, through WebAssembly, what are the use cases that even Akamai could not have thought of supporting, which you can support now? Yeah, no. Well, and maybe to add on to, to Matt's last point as well, just uh, one piece there. I think the openness and portability that WebAssembly brings is something that's very, very interesting for our customers, where when they're making a decision to run on Akamai, they're running on other places as well. They're running on bare metal, maybe they're writing uh, client code as well. And so having the ability to run that in multiple locations, they're not tied into one vendor, that's super important to them. Um, but yeah, in terms of use cases, there's really uh, an infinite variety here. I mean, there's, uh, there's no one uh, kind of um, answer to this. And probably over the last five, six, seven years, um, having support for, for WebAssembly and more powerful functions at the edge of the Akamai platform has been one of our top requested features. So we've accumulated this huge uh, backlog of uh, customer requests that we can now support. Everything from sort of personalization, um, security or watermarking content, detecting piracy and preventing leak of data, um, uh, real-time- Even uh, you can't a, think of all I know, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I was like, I, I've got a list of something like 260 uh, yeah. kind of, uh, use cases that, uh, that, that we have. Uh, and, and so uh, there really is just uh, so many uh, different types of things that uh, across every single industry, it's, uh, this really is a pervasive uh, technology. And so WebAssembly um, unlocks a lot of this. The fact that it's WebAssembly under the hood um, is is less relevant than the fact that we're allowing customers to run powerful code at, at the edge. That, that, that's where Akamai is really excited. We we love the the characteristics of, of WebAssembly, the technology that Fermion's built. It's a great developer experience, which is obviously really important for the adoption. But it it provides the power to run applications at the edge. Um, that's that's the unlock here. Matt, from your perspective, when you look at Wasm assembly, is it like the bridge has been built, it's complete, or you know, it's still working the progress? What is next? Yeah, <laughs> I any good technology never stays the same, right? But I think you end up with a period where you have to evolve very rapidly, and then sort of maybe not a plateau period, but a period where where feature development sort of slows down, where developers can say, "Yeah, I know this technology very well, and I know understand how it works, and I can build on top of it." WebAssembly is at that moment where it is just crossing a couple of major milestones that will. We'll send it into that sort of stability period. Uh, the the WASI specification, WebAssembly system interface, is just about done. About a week ago, Wasmio, this technical conference in Barcelona, uh, the, it, 
the creator of WebAssembly, Luke Wagner, talked about how they've solved sort of the last major problem for WASI. And it, it'll go through the specification process, it'll be done. Uh, the WebAssembly specification itself, which is done under W3, which is the same organization that standardizes CSS and HTML and all the technologies we're really familiar with, they are going through the process of standardizing all of these things. I feel like, maybe not a plateau, because it's always changing a little bit, but we've hit that kind of stable point where WebAssembly is going to be a known quantity. Uh, again, you know, with Oracle announcing a week ago that they were putting their weight behind WebAssembly and Java would compile to WebAssembly, that was sort of the last big milestone on the language side to say, look, all these different language communities, the ones that we build everything from banking applications to, to e-commerce to our streaming services in, have now bought into WebAssembly and said, yes, it is a viable use of our time to make sure that WebAssembly is a supported platform. That in and of itself, I think, indicates that we have hit that kind of maturity point or we are currently hitting that maturity point right now. So you're talking banking, is WebAssembly also on mainframes? <laughs> I... It is interesting you mentioned that because at lunch today, we were talking about, is can we run uh, WebAssembly on AS400? Can we run it on? And there's no reason you could not. Uh, so I, I don't actually know of anybody that's doing it yet, but there is no technical uh, reason that you could not do that. Uh, anything else uh, from today's discussion that you would like to cover or do you think that we hit on all the major points? I think we hit on all the, the, the main points, but I mean, for us, uh, I mean, th this is a really exciting technology unlock where the, the use cases that this supports are what we're really excited about, bringing that capability and functionality to the edge of the Akamai platform. I think we're going to see some amazing uh, applications being built that we can't even anticipate right now. How is Akamai involved with the uh, WebAssembly open source community? I had a discussion with Alex just before you, so I had, but I want to hear from your perspective, your involvement with the WebAssembly community. So, so we have not been deep into the, the WebAssembly. So, so we're, uh, that's why we're partnering with Fermion. Uh, is like we're, we've gone out and looked for uh, people who are deeply engaged in that, that community. We're involved in a lot of other uh, CNCF projects uh, and other um, uh, open source projects, but WebAssembly, this is where we're looking at uh, people like Fermion as, uh, as the leaders. Uh, that's why open source work, like it's not just the code contribution, it's community building, communication, a lot of, from from your perspective, anything else that you would like to touch upon or you think that we have hit on all the major points? No, I'm just really excited about the fact that, you know, we've of course, any, any project like this is not done overnight. We've been working on this for quite a while now and it's so exciting to get to say, you know, we just launched Fermion Wasm Functions on Akamai. You can just experience, you know, the, the, the fastest serverless platform in the world running on the fastest fastest network, the most distributed network in the world. Very, very exciting. Uh, you can go sign up today and try it out. We've got a free trial going on. John, Matt, thank you so much for joining me and, you know, uh, the exciting news at the end of the day. Thank you so much for sharing this great insight. And I look forward to chatting with you folks again. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you very much for having us. Thank Always a pleasure.